What is up guys? Welcome back to another Draft League format review. Uh, after a little bit of a break on the channel, I haven't been uploading much in the past couple of days. That's my own fault. Sorry about that. But we are back to a regular schedule now. And uh, today with us on our reviews, like I said, I wanted help on these. And we do have people lined up for the next uh, four or five installments, which is really cool. Um, and today we have with us a new player that I discovered in Draft League format through the GOT. Very awesome and very talented player count riario say hi buddy hi hi everybody <laughs> so today uh he's going to be helping me out with uh with tapu bulu we're going to be covering tapu bulu you can see it on your screen of course and uh i'm going to jump right into it with the stats now tapu bulu is um was recently discovered as one of the best wall breakers uh in the ou tier uh, as far as grass types are concerned, there hasn't been this powerful of a grass type before. I guess you can consider Shaman Sky, but even that was just spamming Air Slash. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Tapu Bulu's typing, of course, being a fairy and grass type. Uh, this is not a new typing to us. We did have Whimsicott before, so we know its weaknesses and uh, resists pretty well. It is quad weak to poison, uh, weak to fire, flying, steel, and ice. And it is uh, a resist to dark, electric, fighting, grass, ground, four times on ground if it's earthquake because of grassy terrain that it sets up, thanks to its ability. Uh, it's also uh, resistant to water and immune to dragon. So, uh, let's just go over its stats real quick. So it has 70 HP, not the best, not the worst. Uh, 130 attack. Now, this is what really makes it an insane wall breaker. <laughs> uh, you guys are going to see with uh, with the calcs, I think. Uh, I'm going to be going over those. Uh, Count's going to be going over the notable moves, but uh, this 130 attack is insane. Paired with a 115 defense, which is really solid despite its HP. Uh, we have 85 special attack, which is usable. It does get a nice uh, special move pool. We won't be covering any of them, but it gets moves like Giga Drain, Dazzling Gleam. Uh, 95 speed F and 75 speed, which is definitely usable, especially with a choice scarf or in general as a wall breaker because walls are typically not very fast. Uh, this makes it a base stat total of, of course, 570, which we've covered before. All of the tapus hit 570, which might not seem like a lot, but once we get into the calcs, you'll see why this thing is a monster. I'll let Count go over the notable moves now. All right. So the first move we have is Woodhammer. Uh, Woodhammer is amazing on this monster because it's 120 base power. Uh, it, does, it does, of course, have a lot of recoil, 33%. But in Grassy Surge, the grass type moves are powered up by, I'm pretty sure it's 50%. So it does so much damage coming from 130 attack. Uh, another move he could use is uh, Horn Leech, also a grass type move. Uh, you get more recovery, but it's, of course, uh, way less powerful. But you get recovery instead of recoil. So it's something you could use if you want to. Uh, you probably want straight up power of this mod, so uh, Wood Harmony is rec recommended. Then there's Superpower, this is the best move to hit Steel types. Uh, it's a blessing that got this move because otherwise it wouldn't be able to hit uh, Steel type source. You know, yeah, actually Steel types in general. And 120 base power, that's amazing. It does of course lower your attack and defense, but it can afford it. Because it will probably do it kill most of the monsters it faces. Then there's Stone Edge. Um, this is basically to face uh, Flying types. Because it does they do take uh, Wood Hammer Superpower. Uh, fl fire flying types like Charizard also get knocked out. Um, so yeah, it works really well with him. Then there's in Hutbelt. This is notable because um, it hits the poison types, which take the super power or the horn leech, uh, stone edge maybe, depending on you know their typing. But like um, Amoongus doesn't want to take a Zen Hutbelt, uh, any other poison type really. Other notable moves are like Leech It and Substitute because this is actually pretty bulky mon. Grassy Terrain does give it leftovers. Uh, also its opponents if they're on the ground, but whatever. <laughs> and with Substitute, you actually, with Leech Eat Substitute, you gain so many, so much HP every single turn. And that works brilliantly. You can you can pretty much stall your opponent out. And it's a pretty bulky mon actually, with, with 70 HP and 115 defense. 195 speed up, of course. So uh, yeah, you can, you can make use of that. And the last two moves are actually Swords Dance and Bulk Up. Now, this mod already has 130 base attack, but if you go for Sword Stance, that powers us up so much, and you just, you pretty much 2 kill every single mod in the meta. Well, and in the entire game, I think. <laughs> we were also and talking was... <laughs> about a, a Spadef bulk up set, um, which is the last uh, move on the notable moves, and um, in League format especially, I think this is where this uh, kind of move set can yeah. shine, if you just want to cover that a little bit. Yeah, if you go uh, with a Spadef set, like Max HP, Max Spadef, and you go for bulk up, then nothing can actually Oko it, obviously, and with with Horn Leech for recovery and of course a grassy search, grassy terrain boost, 
you get so much HP back and you're unkillable and you do so much damage. So this thing in, in League format or in any format actually is going to be a huge threat. Pretty much after two bulk ups, you're going to need a special poison move to take this thing down. So Absolutely. Yeah. very, very notable, Mon. A lot of people don't have necessarily a poison type on their team uh, in League format. So you might want to capitalize on that with a set, with a set like that. Let's look at uh, some notable calcs, and there's actually one that Count doesn't know about it. I have it up on my screen right oh. now, but uh, he did mention <laughs> Amon, and I just want to go over uh, how much this thing's wood hammer can do to it. But uh, let's look at um, max attack, adamant, uh, no boosting item, wood hammer, to a magna zone does 50 to 59 percent this is a resist people uh it's 87.5 percent chance to a ko after the grassy terrain of course you do have to take into consideration that whatever you're hitting is going to be gaining some recovery thanks to your own ability uh even if they don't have leftovers so that's something to keep in mind then we have such a good route. Yeah, then the next three we have are Choice Bandit Calx, uh, because that's typically what you're going to see in a Wall Breaker set, but um, Choice Bandit Top of Bulu's Wood Hammer to a max HP, max defense, uh, fully defense invested Yuxi does 82 to 96%. That is not a switch in, people. Do not think your Yuxi can come in on this thing. Uh, after rocks, it has a very good chance of going down, so might want to watch out for that. Then we have Max Attack Choice Bandit to... Uh, Adamant Tapu Bulu, of course, once again, to 240 HP, 252 defense. Uh, Cresselia, another bulky psychic type, 70 to 82%. So that's another guarantee to hit KO, and normally you'll be outspeeding Cresselia because they don't have a tendency of running speed, especially with this set that we have here on the calc. Uh, next up, once again, the same set, the max attack choice banded Adamant versus Superpower. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Superpower versus max HP as Cavalier, which is what you'll typically see on an Assault Vested variant. Uh, a max HP, max uh, attack, adamant, a scavalier. Does 60 to 71%. That's a guaranteed two hit KO after the grassy terrain recovery. So you pretty much always knock it out, which is pretty crazy. It can't switch into you. Uh, and then uh, we have max attack minus one. So this is because of intimidate. Uh, max attack life orb, adamant, Tapu Bulu's wood hammer to. Uh, max HP, max defense, Lando T, which is something you very commonly see in the OU tier, uh, does 57 to 67%. That's a guaranteed two hit KO. So, and that's even after leftovers, of course, because you're doing over 53. And then finally, the calc that I didn't have up on our notes um, <laughs> Max Attack, Adamant, Choice Banded, Woodhammer to Charizard Y does 49 to 58 percent wow. <laughs> that's not a resist guys that's a quad resist and it's a two hit ko well it's a 99.6 percent chance to two hit ko so you can see that uh after rocks that thing is straight going down there's there's no switching into to tapu bulu with wood hammer you pretty much need uh a poison type or steel type and that's what we're about to get into actually i'll let count go over the checks and counters to this mon the very few yeah so the first thing you want, obviously, is uh, something that takes wood hammer. So most notably, uh, steel types or flying types. Steel types are obviously the best defensive typing. So you want something that also takes superpower. And the best ones to do those are Scissor, Celestine, and Skarmory. Celestine and Skarmory, both being uh, flying steel, take pretty much every attack Top of Buddha wants to throw at them. And they can recover it up with uh, Skarmory with Rules and Celestine with like Lead Sheet. And they can both threaten it out with their stab attacks. Scissor, if it's... Uh, Mega Scissor, it takes it on very easily. It's regular Scissor, it actually, it struggles a bit for the superpower, but it should be able to take it on because superpower does lower your attack, obviously. Uh, so those take it on pretty well. Jirachi also, uh, you know, is uh, neutral to superpower and resists every other attack it wants to throw at it. And it is able to wish protect off uh, whatever Tapu Bula wants to do to it. So that's actually a really good check to it as well. Then there's the Blade, which is immune to superpower. It does take the Woodhammer very well. And also Stone Ash doesn't do anything, Sinhapu doesn't do anything. The Blade obviously checks it, doesn't have the best recovery, uh, except for Vest. So, um, yeah, that takes it on. Then there's Fire Types, because, uh, well, except if they're weak to Rock, like Stone Edge. But Fire Types also take the Wood Hammer very well. Um, some even have, like, Flame Body to uh, to burn it with, if it goes to Superpower or Wood Hammer. But nothing really uh, that's not on this list wants to take any attack from Top of Bula. So. There's so little checks counters to it. Like in league format, there's only like four or five miles that actually take it on. Yeah. So you, you're you not gonna be able to check it if you don't have one of these five miles I just mentioned. 
Now Which the, is crazy. The good thing about Tapu Bulu, uh, the one way that you can check it is just speed in general because of its 75 base uh, base speed. So uh, yeah, if you have fast switching. Pokemon, yeah, exactly. It, it doesn't switch yeah. in very well to attacks, uh, despite grassy terrain, especially if they're super effective. So what you're going to want to do is pair up um, Tapu Bulu with uh, Pokemon that work well with it, and we'll get into good partners right now. Uh, so Magnezone and Magneton are very good partners that you might want to draft. Uh, as we did cover, Celesteela, Skarmory, Scizor, Jirachi, Deblade, these are all Pokemon that switch in very well. Uh, if you're able to trap them with Magnet Pull, uh, outside of a Shed Shell of course, then uh, you can eliminate them and then have your Tapu Bulu sweep, uh, sweep. We didn't really speak about Scarf Tapu Bulu, but that's also an option. Uh, sure. Especially if you're lacking speed on your team. 75 speed is a very usable speed with a Choice Scarf. Uh, next up we have Heat Ran, which pairs very well. Pretty much if we look at all of uh, Tapu Bulu's weaknesses, being Poison, Fire, Flying, Steel, and Ice, um, Heat Ran resists all of those, so uh, it's even immune to Poison, of course, So and Fire, so it can switch in super easily to any one of those attacks very nice and you it also allows you to get up stealth rocks speaking of stealth rocks our next pokemon on the list and good partners is empoleon now empoleon is not a, typically a pokemon that you want to put on a draft league list uh it's it does too much basically uh, it's one of those pokemon that you need as a stealth rocker as a defogger uh as um a bulky water and it can't accomplish all those roles but in this scenario empoleon does very well because Tapu Bulu actually gives it uh, passive recovery uh, because of the grassy terrain. And once again, just like Heat Ran, it's able to take on all those moves, as well as the grassy terrain weakening the power of, um, what was it, Earthquake? And there was another move? Only oh, Earthquake. Uh, and Electric moves, wasn't it? Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't, actually. Oh, okay. Just... Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> Polion and, um, and Tapu Bulu uh, complement each other very well in that sense. Next up we have poison and water types such as Toxapex and Tentacruel. Once again, Earthquake's power is weakened. Still gotta watch out for Earth power, but um, a good rapid spinner, uh, Toxapex and Tentacruel both can set up Toxic Spikes which can he wear help wear down walls uh, or even faster Pokemon on the opposing team. Uh, then we have Nihilego, yet another poison type. Uh, once again, another rock setter, fast Pokemon, which you're going to want to want with um, with Tapu Bulu. And finally, we, th we thought that uh, fire and fighting types would also be very good. Infernape, yet again, another stealth rocker on this list. Uh, and it's uh, another wall breaker. It does very well uh, in the grassy terrain. Again, giving it passive recovery. Pretty much anything on the ground is going to benefit from Tapu Bulu being a partner. Uh, and then Embor is just very nice if you create a Volt Turning Core and you're able to get into it. Uh, something that somebody in the NPL was able to do. I'm not going to reveal who, but I really, really like their team. And they have Embor on it, and uh, I think they're going to utilize it very well. Unfortunately, they didn't pair it with Tapu Bulu, but uh, I think that Embor is a very good partner in general as well. So, yeah, for sure. Two wall breakers. Yeah. Imagine Tapu Bulu and Embor having switch ins. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. It was a little bit longer because it's my first time with somebody else on the uh, on the episode, but that's fine. Uh, I prefer it to be a little bit longer as long as I have a little bit of help. That's always nice. So I'd like to thank Count Riario uh, for joining no us today. He will be on the next episode as well with... Um with Tapu Fini. Yep, if you guys want to check that one out, be sure to do that. It's going to be the next episode coming out tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, and finally, we're going to top it off with uh, a uh, match against the two. Basically, Count's going to choose a team from the past, uh, either the GBA, PPL, NPL, any league that's done well, one past good team. He's going to replace uh, Amon. He's going to choose whether he wants to use Tapu Fini or Tapu Bulu. Uh, I have a good feeling about which one he's going to choose. <laughs> and uh, and I'm going to have to do the other one, and I'm going to replace Amon on another pass team uh, with Tapu Fini, and we'll see how we can do against each other. Uh, we're basically going to be having a league format game with those two teams. We're going to let you know which the, which ones the teams are. I'm a big fan of um, Mega Mogwai's pass teams, uh, even Hank the Pidgey. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking into it and uh, we'll we'll eventually decide who yeah. we want to use. So uh, that's going to wrap it up, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Check out Count in the description. I'll also leave a link to his channel. And I will see you guys next episode. Bye. Right. Later.